what is up welcome back to another video here on free will photos today we are going to remove some shadows and i'm going to show you three ways that you would uh kind of be able to go through and do that now if you're looking on the screen and you see this weird looking crosshair uh, this is a menu that is from the tour box if you caught that video um, then you know that i'm troubleshooting or testing it out and the review of that will come later. Now, I am gonna be using the tour box to make my edits today uh, and just to see how that works. And, but this is by no means a review of the tour box just because I haven't uh, been using this for too much. Uh, why would you wanna open shadows? Well, if you look around my daughter's chin here, it's really, really dark. Well, this needs to be opened up. So I'm on the develop module and when I open up the shadows by clicking and dragging, you can see it's opening up everything, but that area is still just way too dark compared to the rest of everything else. And I really have to open these shadows up a lot just to bring it back to what would have been originally here. But now I have made everything else extremely blown out. That's no good. So we don't want that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and reset this and I'm going to jump over to my effects tab and that is going to bring me to the effects filter here. Uh, and I'm gonna start with a curves adjustment. So we're gonna go ahead and open up a curves adjustment layer. Now, the good news about working in the effects tab is I get these masks available to me. And I'm going to mask in my adjustment in this lower half of the image. Now, there's a few ways that you can do that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click in the middle here and just push up on my shadows. Uh, I don't really like that. So we'll go ahead and undo that real quick and we'll pull down over here and we'll just pull up all the way in the shadows, but I think that's going to work a little bit better. So now what I need to do is create a mask. So I'm gonna click on my uh, mask icon and I'm going to invert this. So now it's not showing and if I were to make my brush size bigger or smaller and I wanna paint in my effect, I can just go ahead and paint this in and now I'm opening up the shadows, but I got this weird looking color uh, change between the richness up here to the darkness down here. So I'm going to have to do some adjustment, uh, some adjusting when it comes to uh, opening up the shadows down here. But you can see I am getting a little bit more brightness. So what I can do is come to the red channel and I can add in maybe just a little bit of red, come to the blue channel and put a little bit of cyan. And that starts to bring back some of that information. Uh, and my feather is way too high. So what I'm gonna do is change the feather on my brush and we'll gradually paint that in and now I have a much better looking uh, blend here it's not the greatest but it's definitely uh, working now that's with using the curves I will show you the before and the after now one other thing that I can do is pull down on the opacity here a little bit uh, it doesn't need to be uh, the most it, it doesn't need to be the craziest adjustment right so with the before and after you can see uh, it's dark and now it's brighter the color tone matches a lot better uh, this way so that's with the curves adjustment now let's go ahead and turn that off so we get back to our original issue and we're going to go ahead and jump over to the local adjustments tab and this time we're going to do the adjustment using the local adjustment. And all you have to do here is pull up on the shadow slider 
like you would normally since the mask is already showing nothing you see i have a full black mask here is you just start painting in where you want it to be make sure that your brush is appropriate size and your feather uh, you don't want a hard feather when you paint like this you see how you get those harsh lines that's no good uh, and that could work and let me go ahead and undo that for a second now that could work if I were to be doing something like this, right? I want to see where I'm painting this effect in and maybe, maybe like, like so, right? And I'm like, okay, that's good. Now I just bring my feather all the way up and I come across those edges and I blend that in so it's seamless for the transition. You want to uh, be as seamless as you can whenever you edit, or at least I like to be, uh, especially on portraits or things where I'm trying to portray reality. And I get it. Not everything has to be about reality. Uh, sometimes it's just about the creative expression and invoking a feeling, which I completely uh, understand and agree with. Now, as you can see, this method does not give us the same uh, challenge as the curve method it leaves some of the, that saturation alone but maybe because it's more muted we'll have to pull up on the vibrance just a little bit to match that upper portion of the face all right now you don't want to go overboard with it uh, you can even throw in just a little bit of saturation but if you start throwing in too much you'll start to see where that blend happens so you definitely want to be uh, cognizant of how much you are putting. Um, and if you're going to err on the side of over processing just a little bit, do it with the vibrance and then pull your opacity down. And when you do that, it'll blend in a little bit better. So here's with the effect off and with the effect on. So it's definitely brightening up that area and making everything more even. Now we're going to move to the final way of showing you this. And this is going back inside of the effects module. And we are going to add or we'll add the tone enhancer. We'll come back to local for a second. Turn off this adjustment. And this is like the last stitch effort. I think this works better with landscape photos uh, if you have to open up shadows, but nonetheless, you're going to pull up on your shadows slider until you start to see the desired look. All right. This is essentially the same way as doing it in the develop tab. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our masking brush and we are going to paint this in. I have my feather all the way up. Uh, and I'm sorry. We need to invert this mask. So we'll come over here, invert. And now we're going to paint this in. And this will bring all of that brightness right back underneath her nose. Uh, I use butterfly lighting, sort of didn't come out the way that I expected it to, but that's for another uh, day, a story for another day. So we'll go ahead and hit O. We'll see that that's uh, reflecting there and then turning it off, turning it back on. And we'll even blend that just a little bit more. Now with this method, you can see I have to like crank this up a lot. Now, I'm also losing that saturation. This is why I'm recommending you only use this method when you are photographing um, landscapes because you're probably going to manage your colors a little bit separate. But let's say that this is the case. We run into this and you're like, okay, I want to fix the color. How do I do that, Chris? Well, you're going to copy the mask because on one is really cool. It allows us to do that. And then you're going to open up another filter and you probably guessed it. We're just going to grab a color adjustment this time. Uh, and 
actually, I'll show you the color enhancer because it's probably the better method. Uh, and then we're just going to paste this mask back in to our color enhancer. And now you have a vibrant slider and you can do the same thing that I showed in the local tab. Uh, it's up to you how you want to work. And as you can see, this is just putting a little bit more color into the image overall. If you want to check out portrait retouching, click the video on the left. If you want to see what YouTube thinks is best for you, click the video on the right. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.